Okay, so as a follow-up on my previous video on how to improve your turbo spool for free, there are also some things that you can do that maybe aren't free, but still will improve your turbo spool massively. And I'm going to go over three, or rather four, so three plus a bonus one, you could say, to improve your turbo response and turbo spool. The first thing on that list is thermal insulation. So this can indeed do a lot for your turbo response and turbo spool. So insulating your turbo with either exhaust wrap, which I really wouldn't recommend. The other option would be with a turbo blanket and or with insulation materials such as I showed in this video. You can do that by putting that insulation material around the turbine housing together with some stainless steel foil or very thin stainless steel sheets and weld that all together. How I showed that in that video exactly and that will improve the spool in a way because the exhaust gas when being hotter carry a lot more energy than when being cooler. This is the same principle as for example hot air balloons work. As air or for instance exhaust gas heats up it expands and so carries more volume. So if it cools down when traveling from the head to the turbocharger for example on a exhaust manifold that is relatively long you could say in an extreme example that would be a rear mounted turbo it's going to lose a lot of energy in the way back to the turbo this is on that way it loses a lot of, of its volume also and therefore the same amount of exhaust gas would take more time to, to spool the turbo this means the longer or the more heat you can retain within the components or within the exhaust gas until it reaches the turbo, the more or the faster you can spool your turbo. While this is only going to make a difference of 100 to 200 RPMs, it's also a sign that when you are, for example, running an engine relatively cool, so you had it cooled down for a relatively long time before a pull, it is going to have a slower response, for example, in between shifts or even uh, when it's just starts spooling, than when you have just done a pull. So the response will be better then. And you can work against that with, as I said, insulating the turbine housing and especially also the exhaust manifold maybe. But there are some drawbacks here because the insulation material obviously offers a barrier between the exhaust housing to the air. That means the heat is going to be kept more in the exhaust housing. So your EGTs are going to be higher. You have to consider that when you are running on the edge of a turbocharger's limit. So for example, a usually the Garrett turbos, which are like from the GT30 or GTX range, they are fine with about up to 900 50 degrees of exhaust gas temperature, but anything above that is kind of where they tend to wear more quickly and where, for example, the turbine housings can develop cracks over time when cooling down and heating up again, etc. So keep that in mind that you may need to run more fuel to cool the EGTs or run a less boost or more ignition timing to get your EGTs lower. The same thing applies for exhaust manifolds, especially if you use exhaust wrap, which I again wouldn't really recommend because if moisture gets trapped in there, it can promote oxidation and rust. So that's not really recommended. The heat insulation on a exhaust manifold that is using materials actually designed for an exhaust manifold. So good quality stainless, stainless steel that can handle those temperatures, it is going to be fine because also there is not much air or oxygen in contact with that exhaust manifold. So it will not rust as fast with that thermal insulation than it would, for example, open air. Another method to do that would be ceramic coating these parts. This is kind of a compromise between thermal insulation and running it open air. It will keep the exhaust gases hotter while traveling through those components, but it will give off some heat into the engine bay so that those components aren't as stressed. The next thing would be optimizing your downpipe and intake. 
this can be very very important for the spool up and also the power that your turbo can produce if you have a restrictive intake that can hinder performance quite a lot and also spool for example let's take a 18t engine that has a relatively long intake system so it goes from down in the turbo to the airbox which has a very very small inlet uh, on the side where it actually pulls air in and it pulls air in from the fender so that is very very restrictive and that can actually pull a vacuum within the intake tubing this means the turbocharger has to operate on a higher pressure ratio than it would be when using an atmospheric intake so for example when the intake did not see a vacuum the pressure ratio is the ratio where the air is in front of the turbo and in the back of the turbo so let's say on the in the intercooler piping this means when you are operating at a atmospheric pressure ratio to let's say one bar or 15 psi then your pressure ratio would be two as the before turbo would be atmospheric and your boost pressure would be one bar. But if you had a vacuum of, for example, 0.2 bar or three PSI even, which is kind of low, and there are scenarios where there's more, then you are running a much higher pressure ratio of 1.2, which puts you in a different spot on your compressor map. While yes, at one bar or lower boost levels, that is not as important. It is important because your turbocharger has to produce more boost to get to that desired pressure takes a longer time and also obviously if you are running higher boosts such as on cars where you're running at the edge of a turbocharger's capabilities then using a pressure ratio that is one to something is much better than using a pressure ratio of 0.8 or 0.9 something so that's something you've got to keep in mind the other thing is on the downpipe that is exactly the same scenario if you have a restrictive catalytic converter restrictive exhaust that is one thing but also bends or edges from the turbo converting to the downpipe or may compromise your exhaust flow that is especially important for example on evos which use a cast uh, downpipe knee so the 90 degree elbow to the downpipe is cast and on the stock ones is relatively restrictive that's why a lot of people port them and that actually does help a lot in performance the optimal flow you can achieve when you are running basically a longitudinal setup and a relatively straight downpipe so if you don't have a 90 degree turn or whatever in your downpipe that is also going to improve your flow especially if you are on the edge of the flow that your exhaust can handle for example if you are running a two and a half inch system but you are also running like 400 horsepower then a 90 degree elbow or something will be a hindrance to the exhaust itself and it will cost you some power and also some spool because the engine has to overcome that back pressure that not only is in the exhaust but also goes through the turbo to the exhaust manifold and that's where we come to the next part which would be optimizing your exhaust manifold that is crucial to turbo flow or rather to the response and also the spool characteristics of your turbo i know a lot of people that run a log style manifold and while those work yes at some point or even at lower pressure levels you are going to sacrifice a lot of spool and also a lot of top end performance because you are going to create a lot of back pressure within the manifold while obviously yes you could buy a new manifold and buy a tubular or, a, or build a tubular manifold there are ways to improve that flow for example if you have a cast manifold you can modify the cast in a way so with a die grinder or with a log style manifold which i'm going to show you in a few minutes on a cast manifold you can smooth out the inner pathways for the air and if the walls wall thickness is relatively high then you even can route the exhaust gases in a better path so you can smooth smooth out edges or corners 
and make it so the exhaust gas has a more direct path into the exhaust housing. That is one thing on cast manifolds. On log style manifolds, well, there are a few things we can also optimize on those. While many people just weld a flange onto that log style manifold, you can use a, for example, T-piece or two 90 degree bends to kind of guide the airflow towards the turbine housing. It's also possible to kind of build a semi-tubular manifold if you are building a log style manifold using two additional 90 de degree bends to get the exhaust gas flowing in the neighborhood of the flange so that it's not going to like go into the front runner or the back runner when the engine fires which is kind of counterproductive and you are using the exhaust back pressure to drive the exhaust gas into the turbo but also into the head and there is where the issue comes if you have a lot of back pressure in the exhaust manifold that is going to cause lower engine horsepower because exhaust gas is going to be pushed back into the combustion chamber so you are creating basically an EGR for so we could say and the more back pressure you have the more exhaust gas is going to be pushed back into the combustion chamber and if you're for example which is very common to have a two times ratio of boost pressure to um, back pressure so you most of the time or very often in not so good flowing applications you have uh, twice the back pressure in the exhaust manifold then you have boost pressure well there is going to be a lot of pressure pushing back exhaust gas back into the combustion chamber and to avoid that you want to obviously have the least amount of back pressure possible which can be done with a equal length tubular manifold but if it's not possible make the path for the exhaust gas as least restrictive as possible to the turbine housing and as straight as possible if you can see the turbine housing from the opening of the exhaust manifold then that's pretty much ideal but obviously that's not going to work most of the times but that would be ideal in theory the last thing would be compression ratio I see a lot of people even aiming on a 1.6, 1.8 engine, aiming for like 250 to 300 horsepower and pulling down their compression ratio to like 8.0 or sometimes even lower. That isn't really necessary and will only kill your low end power. It will make the car off boost drive really, really floppy or really boggy and you don't really have any power off boost except when you are on boost. But then obviously you could run much higher boost levels than you probably are going to. The increasing the compression ratio to, for example, 9 or 9.5 to 1, which is a common compression ratio that is being run with turbo cars to like 1.5 1 bar that's not an issue at all i ran 1.5 bar on my stock engine 1.8t which had 9.5 to 1 compression ratio and i also run that on my mx5 or miata currently and also if you are running a better fuel than for example 93 or in the eu 98 octane for example if you run an ethanol mix or you run water injection or you run water methanol injection you can run 9.5 to 1 or even higher. That will mean that you have off boost more NA power, which will also cause the engine to produce boost faster because you have more power for the turbos even spooling and more power to spool the turbo. So in combination with all the other tips, you can increase your spool time dramatically with more compression. Obviously, if you're going to run 800 and or more horsepower, you have to run lower compression ratios. And this is not going to be really a tip for those people, but the crowd who runs lower horsepower is like up to 300, 350 or even 400. That might be useful, useful info. While yes, the margins for error with high compression ratios might be smaller. Yes, that totally is true. And there is more in risk involved but your engine will run more efficient and you will also save on fuel if it's, for example, your daily driver. That's it for the three reasons. Well, basically on a budget. I hope you learned something from this. And if you did, write it in the comments below. If you have some other tips, you can also 
put them in the comments below. I would be glad if somebody does. And otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.